Let's take a quick look at an LED circuit where we're controlling it by a pin. So we have a pin, an LED, a resistor to ground. And let's say that this is a pin on the PIC32 so it can turn on to 3.3 volts. The way we can set the brightness of the LED is by either controlling the voltage to the pin or the resistor that's in series with the LED. Now it's hard to change the resistor, so we would set it so that we get a maximum brightness. So maybe we pick like 100 ohms. The only way we could change the brightness of that LED is by varying the voltage applied to the pin. Now the PIC doesn't have an analog or a digital to analog converter. It doesn't have the ability to change that voltage. All it can do is turn the voltage on and off. So if we wanted this uh, LED to appear uh, brighter or dimmer, what we would do is turn it on and off really, really fast so that our eyes can't see it blinking, but instead would integrate up the relative on and off amount that we apply to the LED. That type of signal is called pulse width modulation, or PWM, and we can make it on the PIC32 using the peripheral output compare. So this peripheral um, lets us control uh, an IO pin from a timer. Now we want to be able to use the timer because it's annoying to turn this pin on and off. We could use a uh, lat to control whether the pin is on and off, and we could use the core timer uh, with a delay. So we could say, turn the pin on, you do a delay, turn the pin off, do a delay, turn the pin on, do a delay, turn the pin off, do a delay, in some kind of for loop. But if we have other code to do, like check uh, whether we're doing serial communication or uh, setting the brightness of other LEDs, that gets pretty complicated because we have to manage keeping a constant uh, blinking going on while doing these other tasks. So instead, we can use output compare as a set and forget. Uh, let's turn this pin on and off automatically using the state of the timer. Once you set the relative on and off amount of time, you no longer have to sit there in a for loop and check the pin and check the timer and do things like that. Set it once and it continues to output this square wave, setting the brightness of our LED forever. So this is uh, some kind of pulse train, we'll call it. When we look at the oscilloscope, we'll see a square wave coming out of our pin. Um, and each pulse comes one after the other, kind of like a train. Um, the specific pins that it uses are the OC pins, OCX pins. So if we look at a picture of the pick and we look at all the pins and we see the functions of our, every pin, what we're looking for are OC pins. Uh, there are five of them, one to five. And for example, uh, OC1 is on D0 for our particular pick. We'll be using D0 as, uh, as OC1 a lot, but occasionally you'll see that D0 is useful for other tasks too, and then you could try to use OC2 or OC3 on other pins. I think they're all on the D port. Uh, what, do we, what can we do with this? Well, one thing we could do is we could low-pass filter the signal, A low-pass filter acts like an averaging. So if we average a square wave that's coming out of the pick, we'll get a voltage that's proportional to how much the pin is on versus how much it is off. So we can turn our digital signal from the pick into an analog signal by using a simple low-pass filter. Uh, we're going to do a whole other video on that. Um, so just wait until the next video. Let's talk more about how do we get uh, PWM from the output compare pin. Um, it's based on timer 3. Or, sorry, it's based on timers two or three. Um, so the pick has five timers, uh, timer one, two, three, four, five. One is kind of special, so we don't use it a whole lot. It has fewer prescalers. Two, three, four, and five are our general purpose timers. We could combine two and three to be timer two, three, to be a 32-bit timer. Uh, timers four and five could, could be combined to be a 32-bit timer. Individually, they're all 16 bits. And this means uh, that we can have two different output compares uh, frequency bases going, um, one based on timer 2 and one based on timer 3. Um, so let's look at what, what does that mean. Uh, we have um, the pin voltage uh, changing with the value of the timer. So let's say uh, we're using timer 2. So timer 2, when it turns on, is at 0. It starts ticking based on the prescaler that we set. 
when it gets to the value PR2, uh, it goes back to zero um, under the rollover condition. So first thing we have to do when we're using Apple Compare is we set up our timer, either timer two or timer three, and we choose the frequency at which it's going to go from zero to PR using the prescaler and then setting the PR value. Then we can initialize the output compare pin, and the output compare pin says when the uh, timer value is zero, the pin will go high. And it will stay high until it hits a value that we set with the output compare registers called OCR. So if we were doing uh, OC1, that would be OC1R. Uh, and then the pin stays low until the timer hits the value PR. When it hits PR, uh, the timer value goes back to zero, the pin goes high, and stays high until the timer value is equal to the OC1R register. Um, so if we wanted to look at uh, voltage versus time instead of just uh, the timer value, we would see the pin go high and stay high for a certain amount of time and go low, and then go high, and then go low, and go high, and go low. And it would do that forever. We don't have to manually have an if statement that says if, P if timer value is equal to OC1R, make the pin go low. That all happens automatically in the background. So that's the, the compare part of this uh, statement. Output a pin, compare it to the value of the timer, do it all automatically. Uh, so this would be a good example of PWM, and we have a uh, period T, and 1 over T is our frequency, so we can set the uh, frequency of this square wave. And then we have control over how long is that pin high. That is called the duty, or duty cycle, and that's usually expressed as a percentage. So the way I've drawn it here looks like a 50% duty cycle because it's 50% on to 50% off. You could also have a 75% uh, on to 25% off, or you could have a 25% on to 75% off. Uh, and the way we control the duty cycle is not actually by setting the OCR register. It's by setting a, a, a register called OCRS. Now, why do we do OCRS instead of OCR? Uh, when the timer hits the value PR, uh, the timer rolls back to zero, the pick takes the value of OCRS and puts it into OCR. What's happening here is this relative time might be slow. It might be a kilohertz. But the pick's running at 80 megahertz, so it's doing a lot of code in the background while this is happening. Um, we might have some code that determines what the duty cycle should be based on some math, like uh, we're reading an analog voltage and we're doing a control system, so uh, we want to change the duty cycle. Now, let's say that um, the duty cycle looked like this, 50%, and the timer was ticking. Um, so time, time is ticking, tick, 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 tick. And at that moment, we still haven't hit OCR, um, so the pin hasn't gone low yet. At that moment, we decide, oh, you know, I'm going to change OCR to be this value back here. Uh, well, now the condition is never going to be met where the timer value is never going to be equal to that new OCR. So we'll get a whole cycle of 100% duty cycle before it rolls over, and then it knows to do that one. So when PR hits zero, OCRS gets loaded into OCR, and then the comparison uses OCR. And when we want to change the duty cycle, we'll change OCRS so that we don't have this accidental condition of somehow doing 100% duty cycle by accident. So we change OCR, uh, we never, we, we can initialize, uh, sorry, we change OCRS, uh, we can initialize OCR when we first start our code, but after that we never touch OCR, we let uh, this automatic change from OCRS to OCR happen by itself. Okay, let's take a look at some sample code. This is from uh, our chapter uh, nine on Apple Compare in the textbook. And um, we see that what we're trying to do here is make PWM at 10 kilohertz, uh, so a square wave at 10 kilohertz, and we'll control the duty cycle from zero to 100%. And a good question is, what is the resolution of our uh, duty cycle? How many different duty cycles can we use? So in this case, we chose a prescaler of two. So uh, it takes, 
Uh, okay, so when we set the value to into the prescaler, that actually means we're doing a one to four ratio. So the timer, in this case, timer two is going to tick at 20 megahertz, not 80 megahertz, because we're divided by four, biggest way to set the prescaler to the value two. Okay, now we're going to say, uh, when you hit the value uh, 2000, do your rollover. So 20 megahertz divided by 2000 is 10 kilohertz. So that's how we got uh, a 10 kilohertz frequency. Then we're gonna initialize timer two to be zero, so it starts from scratch. So now we've got our timer set up. Once we turn it on, uh, it will start to tick. Before we turn it on, we're going to use OC1. Uh, there's actually a couple modes in uh, uh, the OC module to get PWM. So by setting the OC M bit bits to uh, 110, we're getting our typical PWM mode. Then we'll set our initial duty cycle. So our initial duty cycle will be 500, and this is the one time we can set OC1R. Um, so we'll initialize it to 500. The first time through, it'll use the value 500. Then from then on, it'll always copy OC1S into OC1R. Then we turn them both on. And uh, here we have a delay of four seconds. So for the first four seconds this code runs, we would have uh, a duty cycle of 500 out of 2,000. Then uh, after those four seconds, we would change oc to 1,000 uh, out of a maximum of 2,000. So for the first four seconds, we would have a 25% duty cycle because 500 is 25% of our maximum. And then from then on, we would have a value of 50% duty cycle because OCRNS is 1,000 out of the maximum of 2,000. So how many different levels of duty cycle can you have? It's the value of PR2. We have 2,000 different levels of duty cycle from 0% always low to 100% always high. And if you want, you can try to convert that back to bits. The best case you're ever going to do is have a 16-bit resolution or 65,000 different levels here, but you'd have to very carefully consider your prescaler and your PR value, what frequency you would get to be able to use uh, the 16-bit value that you can put in for PR and OC1RS. So uh, that's enough for this video. Let's do another video next where we use PWM and a low-pass filter to make an analog voltage.